Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. If you recall, in the last episode of the snake series, what we did was we added some intersection testing to determine whether the snake is colliding with itself. And if it is, it takes you back to the main menu. In today's episode, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a food class that will spawn random food in the scene somewhere that's not on the snake. And then we'll also add intersection detection to uh, pick up the food and then make the snake grow by one piece. So let's get down to this. And so let's go into the source, add a new class, and we will call this food. This will be in charge of spawning new food and adding it to the scene and everything. And this should be good. So what we're going to need immediately is we will need a reference to the, uh, the screen size. So like the rectangle, the white rectangle, because we want the food, if we start this up again, we want the food to be able to spawn inside of this rectangle portion, but we don't want it to spawn anywhere outside of it. So we're going to pass in this rectangle and then we're going to pass in the snakes that we also have a reference to the snake. So say public food rectangle background, and then we also pass in the snake and this should be good to spawn this in. So we'll say, uh, we'll also take a couple, we'll say int width height and color. So just in case you want to change the color. Okay. And then we'll add all these as some private variables, rect. Well, we'll make them public background, the snake and the width and the height and then the color. Okay. And then we'll initialize all these in here. So this dot background equals background, this dot snake equals snake, and this dot width equals width, and this dot height <laughs> equals height, and this dot color equals color. Cool. And then let's go down here and we will add in a couple of helper methods that we're gonna need. So first one we're gonna want is a spawn function. So this will spawn a new food somewhere in the scene. So we're also going to need a couple variables up here. So we will say public int x and y, but these will not be known when we create the object because we just want to create the object and then we're going to uh, place it somewhere in the scene all in one go. So we'll say public void spawn and this will spawn a new food. And then let's add in real quick the draw method just so that we have this done. So graphics 2D G2. And all this is going to do is going to fill a rectangle so we'll say g2 dot fill rect and we'll say x, y, width and height. And before we do that, we'll set the color. So we'll say set color to the color. Okay, and this should take care of all that. And this is not currently extending the rectangle class, the component class, let's see. Again, we don't actually need to override anything. I don't know what I was thinking there, thinking to the future of some uh, more episodes that we'll have, be having. So, and then what we're gonna want to add is just a update method as well. So we'll say public void update double delta time, and this will be used to update the food. So inside spawn, what do we wanna do? We wanna find a space on the background that is not currently occupied by food and it is in one of the grid tiles. So we want it to spawn within one of the uh, grid tiles. So in order to do that, we need to first do a random, generate a random number and then we need to bound that to the grid. And then we need to make sure that it's not intersecting with the snake. And if it's not, then we're good. Okay. And so in order to spawn it, we are going to need another helper function that I'm going to put in the snake. So let's go back to our snake, which is right here. And right now we have intersecting with self. Let's add one more helper method, boolean intersecting with rect. And this will check whether the snake is intersecting with this rectangle. So we'll copy this and then we will take out this minus one because we do want to check the head. This is just going to check if this rectangle is intersecting with any of these pieces. So we're actually going to take this out and we'll say if intersecting rectangle and body I return true. And if it's not intersecting with anything, we'll return false. So basically the same exact thing, except we're checking with just a general rectangle instead of with the head. And then we can actually change this to to use this new function, we'll say intersecting with rect, and then we'll just pass it the head rectangle. And so this will do the same thing that was happening before, and we will return this guy. 
Okay, and then we'll go back into food and inside of our spawn method, we can use this function to our advantage. So what we're gonna need is we're gonna need a rectangle that represents this food. So I'm gonna add in another rectangle up here and we're gonna call that rect and gonna go down here and we'll say this dot rect equals a new rectangle and then I'm gonna pass it uh, zero, zero and then width and height and this will just spawn a new rectangle. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna try random positions until we find one that does not intersect with the snake. So we're gonna have this do while loop where we're doing, uh, creating new X and Y positions and making sure that they're not intersecting with the snake. And then if it is, then we're just gonna do it again until we find one that works. So we're gonna say while uh, the snake dot intersecting with rect, and then we're gonna pass in this dot rect. We're gonna do whatever's inside here, which is come up with a new random X and a new random y. And then we're gonna say that this dot rect dot x equals random x and this dot rect dot y equals the random y. So we're just gonna continue doing this and this should hopefully move it to a position that's no longer intersecting with the snake. Let's generate a random number which we can do using math.random. And then we want to bound this to one of the grid spaces. So what we will say is we will multiply this by the background dot width over, and I gotta spell that right, background dot width over constants dot screen tile. Oh, not screen title. The tile width of an individual tile, which we did not hard code in yet. Let's do that real quick, because this will make it a little bit easier. So final uh, tile, this will be an integer. Uh, we'll make it actually a float the tile width and we will set this equal to I believe it was 24 and we'll go back to the window and then go into the game scene here we go yep and so we say the foreground is equal to this this and then the width is constants dot tile width and we'll change this to constants dot tile width just to make sure that we can reuse that in here because it'll make it a little bit easier in here. So we're gonna divide the backgrounds width over the tile width. And then we're going to multiply that. So all of this, and we're gonna cast this to an integer just to make sure that it is bound. And we will multiply all this by the tile width. Then we will add whatever uh, the bounds, so the backgrounds X, and then we're also going to add a little bit of a buffer. So we want the to add in a little bit of room so that the square is actually in the We'll actually do that in the drawing. So we'll just leave it as this. So what this is doing is generating a random number. And then we divide the width by the tile width. So that should give us a number between zero and however many columns there are in our, in our grid tile. So basically like it could be in tile one, tile two, tile three. And then what we do is we multiply it by that tile width to convert it to an actual X position. And then we just add in the X position. So we just add in, we're gonna get an error here. Let's do equals 0, 0.0. It's gonna add in this X position right here. And then that should get us within one of these grid spaces. Okay, and then we're just gonna do the exact same thing over here. So we'll say int math.random times int and then we're just gonna do the background height this time over the tile width because these are square tiles times the constants dot tile width plus background dot y and that should give us a random number and it's gonna continue doing this until it finds two random x's and y's that are not intersecting with the snake at all okay and then let's go down here and tweak this draw method just a little bit so what we want to do is we also want a public int uh, x padding so, and this is basically gonna be however much so uh, to center the square within one of the grid tiles. So we'll say uh, X padding equals, and we want to do this dot, we'll do constants dot tile width over this dot width. And that should give us, we'll, we'll subtract this dot width over two. And that should give us how much padding we will need to draw this in the correct position, okay? 
And then we're going to actually go right here like this and cast this to an integer. And then when we go down and draw it, we will just, instead of filling it directly, we'll say plus the X padding. And then we'll also add the X padding to the Y because this will theoretically be a square too. All right. And then inside update, we're not going to do anything right now. We just want to make sure that this is all working properly. So let's go back into our snake and, or actually let's go into our scene. <laughs> we're game scene. So then let's add in public food food. So we will go into here and then in the beginning of the scene, we will say food equals new food. And then we'll say, we'll actually do this. Yep, right here. So food equals new food, pass in all the parameters. So we pass in the background, which is actually the foreground in this scenario. So then we pass in the snake. The width we'll say uh, 12 by 12 and we'll say color.green and we'll say food.spawn. We should get a food spawned somewhere in the screen and we're actually not going to see it because we're not updating it down here or drawing it. So we'll also say food.draw g2 and then we should see it on the screen when we hit play and we see nothing. What's going on here? Let's figure this out real quick. Okay, and so the problem was we just were adding this X instead of the rectangles X. Let's actually get rid of these because these are more misleading and we don't need these since we have the rectangle which is holding all the information anyways. So change this to this. Uh, we're actually gonna have to cast this to an int too. So we'll say int this.rect.x and then int this.rect.y. And this should be good. So then if we run this one more time, we see that the food spawned. And if we go over it, you notice it is perfectly centered within the snake tile every time, which is good. And then if we run this one more time, it's in a different place. And then if we hit ourselves, run it again, it's in a different place again. And it's still centered. So we know that that's all working properly. Every time we hit spawn, then it creates a new food. And then we'll add in one more variable in here, boolean, um, and then we will call this is spawned initially to false. And then in here, we'll say this dot is spawned equals true because we have spawned a new food. And then inside of update, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if snake dot intersecting with rectangle, this dot rect, then we're gonna snake dot grow. And we'll go into snake real quick and create a new function called grow. And all this is going to do right now is it's just going to print out growing. So it should be growing. And then let's go back into food. And then we will say this dot rect. And then we'll set this to have an X of negative 100. Just get it out of the way. This dot rect dot Y equals minus 100. So this will just make it move. And then we'll say is spawned equals false. This way we can tell within the scene whether we have a food that's been spawned. And then inside of here, it's just gonna, whenever we spawn it again, it'll just move it to a new position. So then if we go into our uh, game scene, uh, inside of the update function, we'll call food.update dt. And then we'll say if food.isSpawned, if it's not spawned, then we'll simply spawn a new one. Okay, and so let's see if all this works, which it should. And we go here and we see a new food spawned. And if you notice in the bottom right of the screen down here, it says growing because we picked up a piece of food. So that's all working perfectly. And as soon as you get it, it spawns a new one. Cool, so this is all working perfectly. In the next episode, we're actually gonna implement the growing technique of the snake. Uh, this should be good for this episode. The growing is a little bit complex because there's a couple things you have to worry about. And then we'll also wrap it up by adding in the boundaries of the screen so that if you hit one of the edges of the screen, you die. And then that should be good for this series. So I hope you guys like this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks.